What is going on, everybody? It's Treeb from Treeb Talks here with the first episode of the Treeb Talks with podcast. On this podcast, we're going to bring on a new guest every single week, discuss some things, shoot the shit, talk about it. We got some guests lined up. Some of them are going to be some local guys that you guys in Florida might not have heard about, but I'm hoping to get a little bit more of a local following. And the first person that I have on this on this podcast is the best, most beautiful person you can have on the podcast. My mother's in the building. Mom, how are you doing? Doing good. And you're full of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, you ask her I'm the nicest person to her possible 100% of the time. No. <laughs> no. Well, that's that's the best part about being... I feel like, you know, people always say, like, when you're a mom, you can't be friends with your kids. But I feel like that's the best part of our relationship. Is that, like, we're... We're best friends along with being, you know, mother-son, I think. Yeah, I think we're pretty good good friends. Yeah. I think, I just, I like, that was, because, like, growing up, you know, you'd come in, and I'd sit down, and we'd have, like, 30-minute conversations until 1 a.m., and I had, like, work or school at, like, 6 the next day. <laughs> yeah, you always stayed up late, and uh, I learned that you can't make kids go to bed if they're not tired. <laughs> Never tired. No. Nope. Well, I mean, to this day, you're still kind of working with kids. You've kind of, you know, you've worked with kids. You've worked in cleaning some things, you know, uh, cleaning some things. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, you know, because I, I just remember you told me the other day that, like, you hate being called a maid because that's not your job. But, I mean, what would you, what would you call, what are you, an independent contractor? No, right, well, <laughs> right now I'm a caregiver. A caregiver. A caregiver, which um, encompasses everything. So it's just like being a mom. So I clean, um, take care of people, whatever they, they need. And right now it's more helping clean in the house and things like that. Yeah, and you deal with people that have kids. And does, does that ever does that ever give you like a throwback to when it was, you know, dealing with me around that age? Oh, definitely, yes. And I think, uh, well, more so, you, know, you guys, you and your brother are pretty much good kids. So yeah, pretty much. It's a... I learned how to deal, I think, uh, my experience when working on, in the school district help with the kids more so than you guys. So I know, obviously you started off a little, like, working-wise. Because at first when I was growing up, you were, like, a stay-at-home mom. You did everything at the house. And then you kind of transitioned to being, like, a substitute teacher, kind of, like, with teacher aides and things like that. And then, you know, you got really close to one student. Like, what... I guess, obviously, I know you're caring from being my mom, clearly, but what was the driving force behind going into that kind of profession? Hmm. I don't know. I guess, first, it was because it was easy to have that job when you guys were in school, because I had the same hours that you guys did, and subbing, and then, um, uh, I don't know, we just kind of, me and my student, kind of found each other I yeah. guess I don't I don't know I feel like uh, she's got autism mm -hmm. and um, we just I understood stood her and she got me I guess I don't it's hard to explain well I think I think what really started it was you coming into my first grade class <laughs> every day and, it, and you did it and the thing is this is how nice my mom did she didn't get paid to do it she literally <laughs> just did it out of the goodness of her heart she's like you know she came into class and was like, Mrs. Nesset, shout out to oh. Mrs. Nesset if you're, <laughs> if you're watching Nesset. this. I doubt it. But I mean, oh. that was my first grade teacher. and She was wonderful. She gave me a very good uh, recommendation letter. And she was wonderful. Do you remember her dad was the mayor? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Mayor of Lewiston. Shouts out to Lewiston, Idaho. And yes. And I, she said that you guys were really impressed that her dad was the mayor. And he came in and read you guys the story. <laughs> I can't remember really that far back. The only thing I remember in first grade was they had a green chair that you got to sat at <laughs> during reading time. <laughs> and, you know, I haven't won a lot of things in my life, like, contest-wise or anything, and you get, like, green tickets for behaving, right? I only put two tickets in there because I only got two tickets for well behavior. <laughs> and all these, all these kids that were just so, you know, sitting up straight, hands up, and, like, in the first grade got, like, seven. They put them in there. She did the first drawing. And I won the first chair set. You did? Yeah. That, that's what my, odds? That, 
you have better odds of wearing the winning the Powerball than sitting in that seat. She literally pulled the name out and did like a double take. Like I don't think he deserves to sit in this chair. But I think after a while, you know, with you being there, I think I got some brownie points. Oh yeah, Miss Nessit in the first grade. Maybe uh, your name wasn't even on there. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh, her mom's his mom's there. So I mean, that could have been that could have been the uh, the driving force behind you getting that job. They're like. Trevin's like the king of this classroom. He's yeah. sitting in this green chair during reading time. Like we heard about Trevin in that green chair. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't even a nice green chair. It was literally like, well, I mean, first grade. That was probably like two thousand five, two thousand six oh, for me. Goodness. I don't remember the green chair. But but I mean, it was. You know, everybody wanted to sit in it. It was a oh, recliner, sure. you know, and you, you had kids that were waiting on you. You know, you literally felt like a king sitting in there. And I remember, I, I, I said, I. Right when I won, I was like, yes! You know, I was hyped. And then I just remember bragging to everybody. Yeah. I was like, I only put two tickets in there. <laughs> and I won. Yeah. You know? One one other thing in elementary school that was a big thing at Orchards Elementary School was pizza with the principal. Panth- you remember P- Panther Paws? Yes, I do. Dude, kids would stockpile those. I remember freaking, like, there was this kid, in, I think his name was Riley, and he... And he wouldn't submit anything in until like two months. This kid had a strategy. This, <laughs> this, this kid came in stockpiling 500 panther paws. Kids, kids that are now in jail would steal panther paws <laughs> just to get a chance to get that pizza perfection with the principal. Did you ever win that? I won that three times. You did? I won that three times. Got that pizza with the principal. It was that pizza perfection, too. It wasn't even that good pizza. Why was that such a big deal? Well, it was... <laughs> It was, you know, when you're in first grade, second, when you're in elementary school, I mean, there's only so much like, you know, you can flex on the kids about, you know, there's only, there's <laughs> oh, only so. so many cool things. I mean, yeah. you know, when in sixth grade, you all go to the swimming pool in like fourth grade, you all go to the rendezvous, but everybody yeah. experiences that. When you win pizza with the principal oh, that's true. or you get that green chair, <laughs> that's only you. Yeah. You know? So, and, and I remember too, cause I did at the end of every assembly, we'd have assemblies like once a quarter or something. Yeah. And they'd say your name out on the microphone when you won and you'd stand up and everybody would <laughs> clap for you and you'd be like, oh, I finally got something. Did they say, oh, not Trevin again. So no, they, they probably times. said Trayvon Pixley. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> probably what they said. Probably nobody gets your name right, do they? <laughs> no. And I got to blame you guys for that. You and dad. I don't even know. Like, like, how do you even come up with a name like that? Your dad picked it out. It was a baseball player, I think. Well, see, that's what you say, and I try and Google it, and I try to find it, and it must have just been some irrelevant dude that played, like, outfield for the Nationals or something, because I, I, I never even, I've never even found, I tried finding it. I'm like, Trevin Baseball. Was it a baby book? No, I think it was a baseball player. But anyway, we're going with the T theme. Yeah. And that's, uh, Dad liked it, and I liked it. It was unique, Mm -hmm. so... We decided to go with that. So what were you just chopped liver? They didn't want to do no. Was it so? Was it if it was a girl? Would you have named it an S name? No, I don't know. <laughs> Dad just wanted all the naming rights. He wanted three T's. Well, in fact, when your brother was born in Italy, uh, he when he, whenever he was born, Dad filled all the paperwork out and did everything and named him without me really okay in it. <laughs> Oof. That was that 90s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was that was the 90s parents. So obviously, I mean, something you tried, well, it was mostly dad. Something dad tried pushing, and you, and you agreed with it. it, was, you know, me going to the military after high school. Yes. I mean, dad, you know, he was in the military for however long, I don't know the exact number, and, you know, you grew up in a military family, Grandpa Jack retired in the military, shouts out to Grandpa Jack if you're watching this, Uncle Mike, Uncle Mark, all those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, Uncle Mark was in the military? Yeah. What was, I guess, what was your experience, you know, living that life, you know, living in the Army base or Air Force base and, you know, living in, a, you know, that kind of family life? Um, I liked it. I think it was a wonderful environment. Um, although my experience, I don't think, was like a lot of the kids that were in the, the um, military because after my dad got stationed in California, Grandpa Jack did, and we stayed there for 20 years yeah. and that's not normal normally you move around a lot so um but um i like growing grew up on base and went to school on base which i think is a little unusual and 
It was a good childhood. Was it? Was it like you? So you grew up on base. So did you grow up basically with the same group of kids like all throughout, or was it kind of like you know, like growing up with the same kids all throughout, or was it like? Not different a, kids. Different kids all the time. Because, so. you know, people are moving in and out. Right, and that's why I kind of felt bad for you and your brother sometimes when somebody would bully you or whatever. Because whenever I got bullied, I'd know that they'd be leaving in a year or two. So <laughs> yeah. I just had to hang in there until they moved. So, But you guys had to deal with it, and you guys did a good job doing that. Not that you got bullied. No, I no, and 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 you and you still be holding grudges against kids that bully Trey. <laughs> I do. You know, and it, it's funny too because you know we won't say names on the podcast, obviously, but you know, two of them, <laughs> you know, I ended up becoming really good friends with. You know, we play back. That's mm-hmm. that's something I always wanted to do. I need a backyard football vlog so we can watch. You know, Cameron complain the whole time not getting the ball. He's right. a diva out there. You being a quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the Gardner Minshew of backyard no, football. I don't know about that. <laughs> and by that, I mean extremely mobile. Yeah. Or how, good looking, maybe. Yeah, good looking. The must, the mustache that you're trying to work on. Right? Yeah, it just it doesn't grow in good. You know, it looks it looks like like. Or at all. Right? <laughs> You know, if you look, if you look at, I don't know if you guys have watched the video and you've seen Bryce, but you know, my mustache grows out like a Bryce stash. And, yes. <laughs> and it, it never works out, you know, like I, would you try, you know, like I, I was always envious of like Ty, you ever Ty, dude, oh, Ty yeah. in like seventh, eighth grade, that guy had a full grown beard. Yeah. <laughs> I was, know, that was a crazy. grown man from the jump. Oh, I know. There's always a, at least one kid. This guy, yeah, he has the facial hair. But, you know, two of those kids in, like, way back in kindergarten, you know, might have, like, said some things to my brother, like, you're stupid. And then Trey's like, hey, mom. And, you know, because he still had the same voice in kindergarten. <laughs> Trey would never complain. I had a teacher call me. Oh, oh, so it was a tell real. tell me that he was getting bullied. So yeah. Trey didn't really say anything. So a teacher called me to let me know. So, so you know, yeah, and then I just remember because I ended up because Trey, Trey buried the hatchet with those guys because I mean, pff, right now they're twenty two, twenty three years old, <laughs> and like that gives you that gives you a good sense of Lewiston, you know, like once you grow up right. here, it's hard to it's hard to leave. But I mean, I think that's everybody's goal. But I just remember like the other day I was like, I'm going over to his house, and you're like, no, <laughs> <laughs> bullied my baby out there. That's right. That's uh, that's right. You shouldn't do that. It's not nice. But he really made. His life, I don't know. Well, I mean, he has an elite career now holding signs. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the first time in a podcast that someone's called me Trevin, to be honest. Nah. Well, <laughs> be nice. I am nice. You know, it was it was funny because, you know, Dad picked me up Dad picked me up from work the other day, and, and I asked him, I was like, so I heard Trey got that, that sign-carrying job again. Because, you know, if you're a local and you're listening to this, you know, like, Lewiston businesses are closing left and right. <laughs> It's going to be a ghost town here soon. It's probably like, because we probably have over 30,000 people living here. And that's a decent sized place, especially for Idaho. Yeah. But we have like nowhere to go. No. You know, it's just, no, Mm -hmm. it's like, it's like empty, you know, and that's just, it's crazy. But, you know, so we have people like on the side of the roads in different locations holding up signs. And one of the businesses closed before and Trey did that. And I just remember I get in the car and I was like, I heard Trey's doing that. And dad's like, yeah, (laughs) Yeah, he hit him up or whatever, and, and then he, and then Trey goes, he wants me to come back because I got experience. That's and, right, he's got job security, <laughs> so next door that closes, they're going to hire your brother. Yeah, there's, yeah, you know, because I just, I thought that was funny, because he, cause he told me the same thing, he's just like, he's like, yeah, I just got that experience, you know, and it's, it's literally, like, I mean, it's just funny, because, you know, he's literally standing on the side holding a, well. but I mean, props to him, dude, who would want to be? And how cold is it now? Like 30 degrees, snow on the ground. Who'd want to be out there? He literally picks the worst, you know, the worst time. Well, he doesn't do it, but the businesses choose to close either in the heat of summer or the dead of winter. Right. And And, he does it. And he's out there. Well, that goes hand in hand with exactly what you just said. Trey doesn't complain. No. And, you know, he gets $15 an hour, so that's not bad. All right. We're going to continue this conversation with my mom after this short break, and we'll be right back. And we're back with part two of the Treve Talks With podcast with my first guest, my beautiful, awesome mother. <laughs> One thing I got to shout out uh, my mom and dad for is that they spent more time cleaning my apartment moving back. 
<laughs> than I did. You know, obviously, uh, explained it a little bit in my last video. You know, we've had some living complications for a while, and, you know, mom and dad, I, you know, I said I didn't have a microwave. They went out, they bought a microwave, you know, and, and, and we'll just give you a shout out on the podcast, Tony. I appreciate that. Well, thank you. No problem. We're happy to help. Yeah. So, you know, I guess, because if anybody's listening to this, they can tell you're super nice. Oh, stop it. You're thank super, you. <laughs> super nice, super laughy, everything. Yeah. Well, thank you. Is that just from how you were raised, you think, or is that how, is that just your state of mind? Uh, I think both. I think my life's pretty awesome. Mm. Two wonderful kids and a wonderful husband, so don't have much to complain about. Dad's average. But, He's wonderful. <laughs> but, um, one thing. You have the best dad. Yeah. You do. I know. Yes. I know. He, 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 he does. He does it. Yes. He's done a lot for you. Yeah. And you're the last family member to be on the podcast too. Were you getting a little jealous by that? Or Cause I remember <laughs> I asked you, I messaged you while I was at work and you thought I needed something. I was like, you want to be on the podcast? And you're like, OMG. Yes. I want to be on the podcast. <laughs> I was very excited. I'm nervous, but yeah. very excited. Yeah. So is this something, is this something that you, you kind of wanted to do? Do you, you know, you know, people, people need to realize that YouTube has a subsection for everything. I think you need to open up Pyrex YouTube channel. Let's talk about your Pyrex collection for a little bit. You knew that was going to come oh, up. Oh, stop it. You want to talk about Pyrex. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, it's, what is Pyrex? Pyrex is a vintage company. Oh no, they're still around, but they, uh, back in the day they'd make bowls and they would decorate the bowls with pretty designs and uh i collect them i love them and what got me started was you know a dad with his ebay business was looking for things to sell and going to yards that sells and things like that was mixing it up trying to see what would sell or whatever and he bought a pyrex ball home mm -hmm. and uh, i loved it it reminded me of my mom who has passed away mm -hmm. so um i don't know it just reminded me my childhood and my mom and uh it just started from there do you think this if you went back to when you were let's say when did you have me in trey hold were you uh let's see uh, i'm 20, 21 now 26 so you're 26 if we go back to 26 and yourself told 26 year old you that you would be collecting plates and pyrex <laughs> Is that, you know, would that be something that you'd be surprised about, you think? Or what do you... Yes. Although, I gotta say, when uh, I did used to collect precious moments. With yeah, little you figurines. did. You did. So, I guess that was still kind of that, that old lady vibe, you know. I think so. I think I've always been kind of an old lady at heart. It's yeah. kind of sad, but... I mean, back in the 90s, you really didn't... You know, well, in the 70s, too, 80s, when you guys were growing up. I mean, there were... I grew up in the 80s, not the 70s. You were 70s. born in 72. <laughs> your I was child... not. I was born... 71. You were I born know. in 71. I just aged myself. You yeah. <laughs> You're born in 71. Your whole, your whole freaking childhood was the 70s. No, younger childhood, I would yeah, say. That's what I'm I'm more I'm... of a child of the 80s. Than you the went to 70s. elementary school in 76. I started in seventy yeah. six. So a words. You grew you grew up in the eighties. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, fine. You weren't born in sixty nine, I guess. Right. Can't say you grew up in the seventies, I guess. Right, thank you. Yeah. I know they're still old though. Yeah. I don't know why I'm arguing with that. <laughs> but I mean I think I think it's different now because I mean you obviously have there's so many hobbies to get into, you know. When you were younger, yes. I guess teenager years, was was it still precious moments or what was kind of like What's your hobbies? What did you do? Oh, I don't. I like to. I collected heart things and. Jeez, what did I do? I don't. <laughs> did you go out much? Were you like a you know like a partier like clubs things like that? Oh, I don't. I don't know if like clubs were you know as a thing back then, but no, you know. they were kind of that thing. And we lived. Uh, well, the base that we lived on was in the middle of the desert, and you literally had to drive. 30 miles to get to anything. Well, see, like, I would I would die if I had to drive 30 minutes to get to Taco Bell. Yep, <laughs> it was 30 minutes to Taco Bell or anything. Yeah, so that was how that was. But they did have a club on base, but you had to be 18 to get into it. Was that so. something that you you went to a lot when you turned 18? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, me and your father went there. 
I think after it was mid- class. Oh, okay, after class, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I remember, you know, one distinct memory I have was when I was like 13, 14, you know, you guys went through the garage in the basement, you guys found some of your old stuff, you know. And then back in the day, you guys used to have to write love letters to each other. <laughs> you know, oh, boy. You, you, know, you know, that's that's something that was an 80s thing, something that my generation will never really know about. Yes. You know, because see, now you can just send long paragraph text messages to people, you know? <laughs> right. The, yep. the, and as a journalist, the art of the written word really has been, you know, dying down. But, yes. But, you know, um, dad's a smooth guy. You know, yes. I, I, I've I've kind of I've kind of learned you know my comedy ropes and my uh, talking ropes from from my father. Yes. Um, and in one of those letters, it stuck out. Yes. He loves you more than two fillet of fishes. Actually, they were big fishes. Because big fishes. They didn't have a McDonald's on base. It was a Burger King. So. Oh, it was big fishes. What was so it, isn't what, he smooth? Yeah. What was what was your reaction to the big fish comment? Was that was that was it was it a laughing thing or was it sweet? Because because yeah. how how much did he love big fishes? <laughs> you know I that he loves you more than two of them. I, you know I don't think he ate big fishes too, <laughs> too often, but I laughed. So he kind so you know you married a guy that just kind of liked you. <laughs> yeah, I think that's kind of, yeah. <laughs> that's probably why we've been together. So yeah. <laughs> But he's always very funny, so that's awesome. I mean, and and respect to Dad too, because you know Dad's a big Patriots fan. Obviously, you know we we talked about that during the Father's Day podcast. You know, mm-hmm. so loyal to the squad, he didn't say he loved you more than the Patriots. I, <laughs> I should have known that, right? Yeah, I yeah. didn't even pick up on that. Yeah, but <laughs> he's you know, never said that. You know, you, 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 that's that loyalty. You know? Yeah, after twenty years of marriage, never heard of that. I'll have to ask him. Well, you know, it's it's easier to say when you're a bad team, too. And, I mean, y'all got married in 93. The Patriots weren't relevant in 93. You could have said something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to talk to him about that. That's, yeah. <laughs> get, talking about... Get, big, getting your dad in trouble, ta- talking, talking about big fishes. <laughs> big fish. Yeah. You know. Big fishes are dead now, just kind of like freaking how love used to be, huh? <laughs> You're funny too. See, you got it. Yeah, and y'all, y'all told me I couldn't, I couldn't do a stand-up comedy or anything. Oh, oh, you, I don't know about that, Trevor. <laughs> I think you're very talented and have lots of potential to do a lot of things, but I don't, I don't know about stand-up comedy. You get too hurt by comments and stuff. You run off the stage. <laughs> I mean that's Stop how it starts. It. <laughs> Dude, Spokane has a comedy, comedy, uh, comedy. Oh. Uh, what is it like class? You oh, take, oh, you can take like stand up comedy class in Spokane. Well. You know, once I get my license back, I might have to well, do that. Well, I, I think real comics would tell you if you gotta take a class. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's not. You fair. you take a class for like, <laughs> not comedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not for comedy. That's. They'd be like, okay, people laugh here. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like it's like when you're watching like a show like Full House and they got like that oh, automated laughing, oh you know. Oh goodness gracious, yes. That's the worst. So you know, you know a lot of people you know that grew up in like the 80s will say that today's TV and today's music is terrible. But from my perspective with you, you like the newer music more than you like music in the 80s. Is that wrong? Well, and TV shows, too? I would even say TV shows, maybe. No, I like TV shows now, more so than yeah. back then. Um, but music, I mean, where did you learn your love for your rap music from? You. Thank you. So that does show that I, I like the eight, the 80s music, and I like it all, I think. It just depends on, on what's going on and what I feel like listening to. Well, what was, So what was your go-to in the 80s? When you were growing up, what was your go-to music? Probably what was on the radio. Yeah, because back then that was the only option you had. Right, and they didn't really, um, especially where we were at, we only could get like a couple of radio stations, mm-hmm. and one was uh, KLOS, <laughs> yeah. and they played uh, rock music, and uh, KMET, I think, and they were rock music too, and then we had a local one that just played pop music, so... We didn't get any of the rap music or anything like that. So, so what made you like rap music after a while? Because I would say that's probably pop and rap right now are probably your two favorite genres. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I don't know. I, I think it just got popular. Yeah. And um, 
when it started playing on the radio and stuff like that. Um, started liking it, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's just list off some of the concerts you've been to. Not very many. <laughs> I know, but just, but like, so the people know. You oh, know. well, I did go to uh, Mac Miller. Yeah, Mac Miller, Rest in Peace, new album out, yes. too. Yes, that was a uh, new song. What is his new song? Well, his new album is called, I think, Swimming Pools. or It's either yes. called Swimming Pools or Circles. Oh, okay, yeah, there's the something. The, the new song that came out is wonderful. I love that song. Um, and I also like Self Care, that yeah. song. I've been listening to that a lot. Um, so I saw Mac Miller and, oh, uh, Tech Nine. Yeah, twice. No, no. Well, just once for you, I think. One and a half times, yeah. maybe or a quarter time. There's just too many people in there when, with that. And um, Hobson. Yeah. And did I and say? You, you forgot your favorite one. Oh, yeah. Macklemore. Macklemore. Thank you. Yes, I, I would say that was my favorite favorite one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, like Hobson. Yeah. That's because you guys got loved him so much at the time. And uh, yeah. Yeah, so my mom, my mom's a real baller. Yeah, out here it was it was great at school when I was working at the school district. There I would work with this the student, and it was always fun to tell them the music that they liked that I knew some of it. And they'd always be like, "Wow, this old lady knows this music," and they wouldn't believe me. And I'd list some songs and it made me cool. So, if I had a nickel for every time I listened to Ninety Nine Problems on the way to school, <laughs> or Till I Collapse by Eminem, I'd have. Oh my goodness! So much money. I know. Yeah, those were the, the out. Uh, yeah, and unfortunately, we only had a CD player in the car, yeah. and we'd listen to the same CD because we'd forget how to make a new one, and that was before you had the. We could do the, on the phone or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, you listen to those songs over and over and over again. Yep. Yeah, so I definitely, I definitely got some of my love of rap music from my mom. I don't know how many people can claim that, but and Trey really got into it too. I think Trey got like, yes, really into yeah. it after a while. Yeah. But all right, I guess to end the podcast, we have some questions for you. Oh boy, some, some audience questions. That's uh, pretty cool. I got questions. Yeah. <laughs> Dad didn't get any questions. Uh-huh. I don't, that's because you didn't advertise it. I'm more special, I think. <laughs> no, we advertised it. We advertised it a week before Father's Day. Oh, did you? Yeah. Ah, whoop, whoop. <laughs> okay, the first question is from Colton. Okay. And he says, who is your favorite child? <laughs> I love both you guys the same. <laughs> it's me. All right, and then, of course, uh, Bryce has a couple of questions. He said, what is some of your favorite moments with Tim while you, you were both living on base? Uh, favorite moments with Tim. When he was told me he loved me more than two big fishes. <laughs> and we got married on base, so yeah. that was pretty awesome. I fell in love on base. I had, well, both of you guys were born on pretty much on base, so mm-hmm. all that. Well, was it hard to, you know, leave that California base and go into, like, bases in Italy and Utah? It was very hard. I had no idea since my dad was in the military and we stayed the whole time at one place. I did not like the moving around at yeah. all, so. Well, um, I was going to ask you something. Okay, and then one other thing I got to ask before I ask the, uh, to, uh, there's two more, two more questions. Wow. Um, and, um, that question is, you know, growing up, I don't think you had a pet, really. You didn't have any dogs. You didn't have any cats. We did. We had dogs and cats. Oh, really? At Grandpa Jack's house? Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you just never talk about them, really? Yeah, because they didn't like me. <laughs> they oh. kind of like, oh, Chica yeah. doesn't like you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pebbles. Well, that, that's, pebbles. What I, that's what I was going to get to after that, is yeah. that you guys had, you know, Pebbles, and yes. then you guys had Honey, and you had Morris, and you had Bert, and now you have Chica. Yeah. Um, did you kind of turn into an animal lover after you got married, kind of? No, I think, uh, well, it was hard when we were uh, in the, when your dad was in the military, we couldn't, didn't really want to get an animal because if you move bases, sometimes going overseas, it was hard to bring a pet and stuff like that. So, um, kind of always wanted one, but it was hard. And that fact, when we had Pebbles, when we first got married, we had to leave her, we had to give her away cause when we moved to Italy. And that was really hard, yeah. especially for your dad. Cry he baby. Cried a little bit. <laughs> and uh Bryce's other question was what was life like for both of you and Tim going through that time in your life? Favorite places you have traveled or seen during that time? 
So what was... Um, what was life like for both you and Tim growing through that time in your life and the favorite places that you've been to? Oh. Well, it was a good time. I guess, I guess our favorite favorite place. I think Hawaii was wonderful. Yeah. When your dad was still on cars, he went on a trip to Hawaii, and that was um, a beautiful place. To, I would like to go back there. And to close it off, one of you know your favorite people that have been involved in my life. Yes. Shout out to Mrs. Eglin. Yes, and before you get started, Miss Eglin is, you are very blessed to have her as a teacher and that she took interest in your uh, passion to be a journalist. She, I think she had a big hand in getting your job at the paper, which got you started and just a wonderful human being and I think you owe her a whole lot. Yeah, she's definitely one of my all-time favorites. Yes. Uh, she wants to know, what was it like when Trevin first started making his own sports-slash-news video cast at home, and how old was he? Oh my gosh. You started when you were very young doing WWE things, and uh, you were so young I was scared with you being on YouTube. And um, all you cared about was how many views you got, so I think you made a couple of reactionary videos and you, people were starting to be mean to you and you didn't care. You were just happy to get a comment. <laughs> and these, I think, I don't know if I made you get a different account or mm -hmm. something, but they followed you and still... <laughs> See, I don't like people to pick on my kids. So <laughs> but you were just happy. Yeah. Happy people were watching and, and I think you, you said... me or crazy things is to get a reaction out of people so but then i think that you put that away away and then uh i'm not really when did you start being serious about it was it after you graduated you think or when i came became like mad serious about it it was like the year after graduation but i made my first jaguar video because i was Oh, my boss doesn't listen to this. But sometimes, you know, at work, I sometimes, you know, it's just like waiting for news, waiting for email. So I was yeah. like scrolling through my old Facebook posts. The first Jaguar video I ever posted was in February of 2011. Oh. So what? So that was nine years ago. Oh, my goodness. I think as you, uh, you you've you gotten better. Yeah. And you're good at what you do, I think. You do a great job. And, um yeah, it's very great to see the progress that you've done. Um, mm -hmm. And I think you need to keep doing your Jaguar videos because I think you've gotten lots of love from it. And I think that's the reason you're at your current job right now is because of your experience that you've gotten through your YouTube experience. I think it's uh, you do a great job. I appreciate the love and I appreciate you guys for listening to this awesome podcast I have with my mom. Mom. Any final words you got for the people? No. Just that I love you and you're a wonderful son. And I hope you reach your potential and keep at it. I appreciate that. Um, would you say you love Dad more than a 24-pack of Diet Coke? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was <laughs> episode one of the Tree Talks with podcast. Make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified. Every single time I drop a new video, you can check out links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Drew Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Drew Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.